Court. Hey, John. <laughs> it's so good to see you. It's good it to see really, you too. It's so good to see you, man. Really, yeah. so good to see you. So good to see you. I'm enjoying your, I'm enjoying your aliveness, right? Okay, I can I feel your inspiration about about in, like I can see, I can feel what you're facing, right? Like what you're what you're looking at and how how they're talking to you because they're. It seems like it's calling you almost out of your. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, like we were talking about just before we hit the floor, yeah. there's there's. There's so much happening right now, and there and and there's just so much. Uh, there's so much I'm being exposed to and learning about that um, has so much real promise in it. Um, and, and for you know, for the work we're doing together, and for the kind of uh, like I was thinking about it the other day because you know I, I get some people who criticize me. Oh, you 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 need to be more, be more political and blah blah. And I was thinking the other day, I'm not after the French Revolution or the American Revolution or the Russian yeah. Revolution. I'm after something like the Axial Revolution. That's what I'm yes. after. Right? That, that's what kind of revolutionary I am. Yes. Right? And, and, <laughs> and so I'm actually seeing, like, like we were talking, we can get into it a little bit later, yeah. about the Discord server networks and some of the, the, the a, a lot of the other people, like there's this converging mm -hmm. thing happening. Um, I, I, I'm just seeing a, a lot of that especially in this time of Kairos, right? Yeah. I'm just seeing so much, so much potential. I'm so yes. excited. It's, it's a weird place, Guy, because um, I've been telling people this, and I, I still don't know what the proper affect for what, what I'm going to say is. And mm -hmm. I keep trying it on, and nothing feels quite right. But, um, mm -hmm. it, you know, the COVID crisis has really um, increased the relevancy of my work. That's what people yeah. are telling me, right? Yeah. Uh, and... You know, Chris and Andrew and I have been talking about how it's, you know, it, it's done these two things that we, you need both of these for a Kairos, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, it's really exacerbated domicide. It's really accelerated a lot of the features mm -hmm. of the mini crisis. Uh, but for other people, it's shifted their attention right. into the being mode, right? And then there's two things there mm -hmm. that are happening. One, you know, came out with the discussion with Johannes. He was sort of prescient about this. Mm -hmm. That people are thrown back under the subjectivity only to find how shallow yeah. it is in a lot of ways. Oh, and yeah. And so there's that in their bubbling. And then there's people who are rediscovering this, rediscovering mm -hmm. what, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of what really matters is this ability to connect to other people. Yes. And so I've, I've been privileged uh, to just be... I feel, I mean, I feel called to it and there are many people calling out to me about it. Uh -huh. And so this has been just a really intense time for me, uh, but, in, in, but in, a, in, a, in a very good sense, a very good sense. Yes. That's, am that's awesome. And, and How's it, it going for you? It's, it's, I, it's going really good. Um, I mean, for me, the, the, there's not a whole lot that I'm doing that's that much different. I mean, I'm doing stuff with the Circling Institute and, you know, we're starting, we're starting all kinds of new stuff. Um, my wife is home, which is really great. Yeah, that's nice. but, And we've got, we brought everything online, which is, you know, I was pretty hesitant on doing, um, but like now that we've done it, it, it actually works remarkably well. Yeah, yeah. And people so I'm- Culturating. Yeah, right? totally. So I'm having people, like we're doing, uh, we just opened, we just opened um, enrollment for the first, circling training course online um and so we're having people from all over the world right just so, somebody from no norway just signed up um that's cool yeah so it's like it's really interesting but like when somebody you know we have the the circling nights on uh, on, on every thursday and and to have all these people from you know from all different time zones even different days right australia and norway yeah. and russia and like show up Right and are are have a quality of interest that that everyone kind of meets with this kind of quality of interest or something's been shining forth to them. They maybe you don't even have words for it. However, that this medium allows everybody to actually find each other, which is amazing. I mean, it's kind of like just think about it. It's like what? How would we have ever have met? Right. Yeah. <laughs> If sure. it wasn't for this, we've yet to meet in person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. Um, so, so, yeah, I think it's I, this. 
this time for me has been, it's, it's just, it, well, one thing is I've also just moved to Alameda, which is like a little island, right, right by San Francisco. And, and I've just been able to just, I've gone on tons of walks and I live in this old historical neighborhood. And, and, wow. and as I'm walking along, there's, um, Alameda is one of those places that you, ca you can't get it just by going to it once. Like it reveals itself to you and I'm getting, and it's, and it's turning out to be the perfect place for Brienne and I. Oh, it's like, yeah. So it's like on one level for me personally, there's a, there's a, uh, there's like a simplicity and almost a meditativeness, right? Like inwardly, but outwardly on all these other levels, I'm like more, <laughs> I'm reading more crazy stuff and like right. meditating in these different ways and doing all these experiments and my, you know, I'm exploring and pushing edges on a, on a pretty profound level. That's great. At the same That's time. It's really weird how this is, this is bifurcating, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, some of us are very lucky, privileged, like you are, I am, mm -hmm. that, you know, our, our lives have a particular structure to them that has a resiliency to them. Uh, yeah. Other people are not so fortunate, right? Uh, right? And both, both physically and psychologically, they're being hammered really, really hard. And I, mm -hmm. I get to talk to some of those people. Um, and, and, and trying to reach out and provide um, some kind of support and help for them um, has been something I've been trying to address. As you know, I've been doing a free online meditation and contemplation class, and a course, and um, mm -hmm. that, that I'm getting, the feedback I'm getting is yeah. that people are finding it very helpful, very relevant, yeah. very helpful. Yeah. Uh, but I am very cognizant of the fact like I said, that this is a very strange time. The system is being very radically destabilized. Mm -hmm. um, and th that always brings with it tremendous suffering and distress. But, right. uh, you know, but it also brings both individually, as you and I are finding, but I think even more important collectively, mm -hmm. as I think you're, we're, we're both seeing within this new, this new, you know, this almost maelstrom of amazing conversations and community building that's occurring. Right. There's also it's a tremendous opportunity for people too, um, and so mm -hmm. I feel for both of those reasons, for both of them together, almost like stereoscopic vision. I feel a tremendous urgency right now. There's a tremendous urgency yeah. right now. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, there is an urgency, and there's a way. There's a way to commune about it, right? I get, just get this sense that there's there's when I look at like re, the rebel wisdom community and I look at all the people watching our videos and all like your, the discord server, all the things that we're talking about. I just, I'm, I'm like, okay, where, where were those people before all this? Right? Like there's a, there's a way where there's a certain kind of quality of conversation or um, uh, an openness to a certain, and, and what I like about it, it's a, it's a mode that's distinct for me because it's not just like, as I think you would talk about, it's not just the embodiment, authentic relating, right, yeah. mode, but it's, um, but, it's, but it's also, and it's not just the kind of academic or intellectual mode, but there, it's, it seems to be attracting people who have a, have a sense for both of them, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and want to hang in like, have a sense of being interested um, and drawn to that. And yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. They're not academics, mm -hmm. uh, and they're not just into uh, the importance because you know you know more than anybody else, and I've experienced the importance of that kind of interpersonal intimacy. Mm -hmm. And I, I, that word means a lot for me, right? The mm -hmm. interpersonal intimacy you get in certain. But the, these people, they're 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 they're, they're connoisseurs of intelligibility. They, right, they, they want to taste, yeah. um, they want, right, and so, yeah, and, and, and so they're the people that, you know, I'm trying, well, we, you know, mm -hmm. this is a group project, right, mm -hmm. that we are trying to work, I'm, I'm just saying what I'm putting a lot of my work into, and I know you are mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. this is why I'm trying to, you know, craft, you know, double vision, looking back to the best historical templates we have, 
looking at the current cutting edge emerging practices and community of practices, craft the psychotechnology of dialectic to afford dialogos so that people know what it is like to taste by knowing, right? You know, you know, to put serious play with intelligibility and what does that mean? Yeah. You know, um, not just as a cognitive agent, but what does it mean as an existential being? That that's that's why that, that community is the community that I'm especially trying to reach. And so generally, I find the people that are sort of purely academically oriented or purely theoretically oriented, they sort of go, "What's this? And, you know, where's the theory?" And I say, "Well, I've got lots of theory elsewhere. This is mm -hmm. this is something else I'm trying to do here." Yeah. And then the the people then there's other people. You probably encounter this a lot. I was like, yeah. "Well, I just want to feel close to other people." And it's like, right. "Yes, but but you know, we need more than that right now, right? We need more mm -hmm. than that right now. Yeah. We need we need a lot more right now." Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the community, like the, the people that you are identifying as a, a population, that's the people that I am most um, uh, most concerned to help, to afford, to address, uh, and to listen to, and to listen to. Right, right, absolutely. And the, the, the thing that you've been talking about lately, uh, I've heard you talk about lately, is these, these two distinctions. Are you bringing together a couple of things? I wanted to to highlight them and pin them because it, it gets to what you wanted to talk about in the beginning, I think, and which I want to yeah. circle back around to, which That's is cool. this way that of looking at right this that where where the two you could say bottom up and top down right yeah. kind of meet and bleed into each other and point to each other right this sense of yeah. this sense of um, like being with like being with somebody and their suchness. Yes. Right? Yeah. And at the, the suchness same, of the mornness. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And in the same time, there's there's in dialogos, there's there's reaching into and being reached by the inexhaustible, right? The beyondness, the the mornness, right? And it's it, and when you when you when you put it like that, right? Um, it's interesting because I thought um, I had a felt sense of exactly. I thought that was the, the perfect two things to bring it together in that way, because I've noticed the yeah. sense. And in, in fact, I just uploaded a, a circle I did, um, a training circle I did um, onto my channel, which was kind of watching, going deep into this, getting, getting this person's essence, right? right. Yeah. But it, it just bled into these kind of really big insights, right? Yeah. Yep. And and they were it was almost like you could talk about the most like difficult personal thing for he, her and what's opening up around that to like the nature of the universe at the same time. Yep. It's like at yep. some point they just like it, they became figure ground and then they just started to bleed into each other. Like, I think that's exactly right. Um, and um, I think you're alluding to the conversation I had with Paul Vanderclay mm. about this mm -hmm. and. Um, so I was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not very happy. Like, like uh, sorry, with uh, the, the term, but I don't. And you know, the, some of the people on the Discord server were saying, "Can you get a, come up with a better term?" But I mean, it was circled around this idea that I was playing with, of trying serious play with, mm -hmm. of trying to give uh, a secular version of soul. Like, yeah. Right. Like, because I want to. One of the things that I'm really working on right now is, I'm really going to be talking about a rebel wisdom. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to break out of the three monos. Uh, the idea, you know, that the the mind is monolithic; it has one way of knowing, propositional knowing, right? Uh, the idea that the mind is ultimately monologic, and that reason is monologic rather than what all the accumulating evidence and practice is showing. No, it's ultimately dialogical with nature. Right. right. And then the, the, the mind is monophasic. There's one state of consciousness you should be in, and only that state of consciousness gives access to reality, and all the other ones are just aberrant. I'm yeah. trying to break out of all of that in a significant fashion, and so. What Descartes did was he tied the notion of soul and self. He first yeah. of all fused them together, and yeah. then he tied that to that that you know that inner point of subjectivity that is the center of the monolith that that triple mono mind that three dimensions of being sort of monolithic, monophasic, right? Mono yeah. monologic. Yeah. And I'm trying, and I'm thinking, well, what if we what if we try to re so there's this wonderful word that uh, Kerry uses is in his book on Augustine and the uh, 
the invention of the inner self. He says the word he actually wants is the Latin word, inventio, huh. which means both to discover and to invent. Yeah. So things that we see as dichotomous, yeah. think about how relevant that is to Dialogo, say, yes. because you're both discovering and inventing, right? Right, right. Uh, I said to Paul, I wanted to try and reinventio soul to break out of that, right, that triple monism, mm -hmm. right, of mind, that triple yeah. monism of mind. Yeah. And I wanted to redo it in terms of, of its phenomenology and functionality. And that's why I was trying to get at, yeah. right, oh, I was trying to get at something like analogous Geez, I hope I'm not offending people. I really don't want to. Paul didn't take offense. Something analogous to worship, like what mm -hmm. reverence is, because this, this is part of what you and I are talking about with the Dialogos, right? Mm -hmm. The reverence for the Logos when it emerges. And I was trying to get at, okay, well, the soul was the, was the faculty of worship. What mm -hmm. does that mean? Well, no, normally that means just sort of praising and stating yeah. things. But I thought, well, what, what if, what if, right? Mm -hmm. What if it was... It, it's the faculty that mediates between the moreness and the suchness, yeah. right? Your soul yeah. is that which, right? So your spirit is that which mm -hmm. affords you self-transcendence, mm -hmm. but your soul is that, is the mm -hmm. locus, right? It's the horizon yes. of intelligibility, the Janus yeah. face thing that is simultaneously, synoptically, right? Yeah. Like stereoscopic vision, like symbol on joining together. Right. It's what's seeing together, symbol on together, the moreness right. and the suchness, that's the soul. And then just like you were saying, yeah. you picked up on this perfectly. You know, I've been talking to Chris about, you know, that what you, you, the soulful nature of the logos, right? Yeah. That what happens is you get, if the, if, the, if the logos is present, you get a sense simultaneously of the moreness of participation, mm. uh, 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 but the suchness of individuation. And they're, those yeah. two mysteries, are just resonating with each yeah. other and there's yeah. this there's this faculty that comes in t, into awareness yeah. yeah so i'm trying to reinvent you right so the the you mm -hmm. know there's something soulful about mm -hmm. uh you know dialogos and, mm -hmm. and, and 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 what it does is it picks up on our that part of us that is yeah. the active symbol on between the moreness and the suchness and paul actually really liked that as sort of a secular version of yeah. soul. Um, yeah. So I, I'm just trying to, I mean, if you, see, you know what I'm doing, of course, I'm trying to bring as much of the theurgia yeah. into the theoria right. of the universe as possible. Right. So th that, that, that thing you just said, sorry, it was so pregnant, I had to unpack it yeah, a lot. Yeah, totally. Right? Yeah. There's so much going Let's on. Let's midwife there. it. <laughs> there's so much going on there because, like, because, you know, it, it picks up on, you know what what chris and i are talking about in the chapter you know that the, the sensibility mm -hmm. transcendence is really picking up on the suchness of another person mm -hmm. and then the anagoge is picking up on the yeah. moreness but you every participant is soulful in yeah. that they are they yeah. are the symbol on right the stereoscopic right. fusion and symbol on yes. of the moreness and the suchness and that's part of the phenomenology and the yeah. functionality of being in dialogos right right yeah, yeah, totally. So and this there's, is, this is yeah. to remember, sati, anamnesis, sati, anamnesis. This is to remember the soul and, yeah. and to break out of the Cartesian monism, right? That, that, mm -hmm. that, the monism of mind, the monolithic, you know, monophasic, monological mind. And, yeah. and say, no, no, mind is, well, let's re reserve mind for problem solving and cognition. Soul is this existential mediating function. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, totally. And this, and this, you know, bringing it, bringing that back into just, you know, I'm, I'm taking all this and I'm just bringing this back into this sense of what you're talking about, which is this, this, um, help me out with this, but the, what you were talking about, this, this sense of, of, of speaking or, or thinking. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. This in this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, I, I, when people sometimes ask me to give them the elevator pitch for dialectic. So dialectic yeah. is the psychotechnology. Dialogos is the process you participate in. Right? So you yes. can do dialectic, but you can only participate in dialogos. Right. It's right. very similar to the, the distinction between dialectic and dialogue. Mm -hmm. right? uh, yeah. In the book that you and I are both reading. Um, uh, so, but the, 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 the one of, so the elevator pitch I give to people is, 
uh, you, you've realized the logos when you're both getting to a place that neither one of you could have gotten to on, on your own, mm. right? Mm -hmm. and, then, and so that, and people, people have an intuitive sense of what that means. So it's great yeah. for practice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I sort of know what that means. And then they yeah. sort of, say, oh, how do I get there? And then that, that, that's a really good opening. It's a good elevator pitch. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Make, right? But then I was thinking, I was, I was thinking, okay, but let's get a little bit more fine grained. Let's, you know, uh, mm -hmm. let's, let's, like, you know, uh, a, a finer resolution. And I was thinking about, well, part of what that means, not comprehensively, but part of what it means is, I've been noticing that when I'm practicing it with you guys, or with other people, mm -hmm. that I'm doing this weird thing. Normally, you know, people think and then they speak, mm -hmm. right? And then they listen and then they think, mm -hmm. right? And there's a little bit of online. Yeah. Uh, but there's something different when I start practicing dialectic and Dialogo starts to present yeah. it. Yeah. Which is, I find that I'm, thinking by speaking and like, thinking right? by speaking by, yes so that's like i'm trying to get there's a felt sense and a felt difference in functionality between being mm -hmm. monolith being monologic you're just talking in your head and then when i put it out and i'm speaking to you and i'm getting your online feedback even gesturally mm -hmm. and, and, and you know and intuitively and implicit learning mm -hmm. then what happens is right I'm noticing that the act of articulating my words in your presence mm -hmm. is actually, you know, it's, it's, it's articulating in, in the sense of actually, it's articulating my thinking. My thinking is coming into shape as I'm speaking, right? Like yes. I can't tell you what yeah. my thought is going to be yeah. until the speaking has, uh, has sort of finished a cycle of resonance. With yeah, me. yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And so that reminded me of something, and you and I talked about this before. I tried to think about where else have I felt that kind of thing, and it reminded me of when teaching is going well, mm. I'm learning as I'm teaching, right? Yeah. And I'm teaching because I'm yeah. learning as I'm teaching. Yes. Like I'm not, I don't, I, I, my learning isn't done and then I'm teaching, and I'm not yes. just learning. I'm simultaneously teaching and learning as I'm teaching. Like yeah. the act of teaching is opening things up. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's the teaching and the learning are happening in this completely right. parallel and interpenetrating fashion. Yeah. And then yeah. I, I realized that's not just an analogy or, or a similarity. Because in yeah. the figure of Socrates, both of those are happening. Like the mm -hmm. the, speak, the 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 thinking by speaking. Mm -hmm. And the teaching by learning are also like this. Yes. yes. Together. Right. 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 Totally. And this, th there's also this sense in which yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm seeing visually all the, you know, the normativity, right. Yeah. That is, uh, that that that's that's being that's being this you know you use your hands and me too that like hands back and forth like this sense of like finding each other right co-finding each other shaping each other and and in that as that normativity starts to catch hold right you start to break into you start saying stuff that you didn't know about <laughs> yes. yes right exactly like, but, exactly. it, but, it's, but it's wedded in some way to the other person's listening in that particular way, where it's like the speaking, it's almost like, it's almost like it's as if, it's as if, you know, my, my words are more like the thought and the other person is more like the, 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 the representation of that thought, like realizing itself back yeah. around, right? Yeah. Like, that's that's very well said. Yeah, that's very well said. Because there, there is that part of there is that part of listening, which is really interesting to think about listening, like this relationship between listening and thought, right? Because did you get this book? I think you might. One of my students recommended it to me. Yeah. Um, right. I'm just about to start it. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, I've read that like five, ten times. Yeah, so I, I, I so I'll be that's happy a really to good book. Yeah. That's a really good book. Yeah, yeah. But the one of the things that she actually goes into a lot is that 
well, she talks about how, and this is what had me start thinking about it, is how listening is really, we think about listening usually like being an empty vessel and sound comes in and we receive no, the sound. No, no, That's no, not no. it at all. No. No, 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 it's synonymous with interpretation. And in some way, right, when you talk and I listen, if I'm listening, right, and I start thinking is the moment I stop listening. Yes. Right? And that what that I think that shows is shows how wedded listening and you're, thinking really you are. Have to be together. Yeah. Right. So I, I think of listening more and more like, you know, uh, like the internalization that is needed for genuine sensibility transcendence in yeah. John like sense. Like I this is this is again, right? Part of when I'm listening, what I'm doing is trying to tailor my attention, my memory, my receptivity to your suchness. Yeah. Yes. Right. So like I, yes. I feel like, oh, here's a suchness. And then behind me and behind you sort of yeah. around us all right. is, is the moreness. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah. right. I try to speak the moreness and I try to listen to your suchness. Yeah. Does that make any sense? But oh, that, yeah. That, yeah, 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 that, that, that's, that's, that's I speak how it, the moreness and I listen to your suchness. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. T exactly. It's almost like where my, it's like, in some way, like right now, I'm kind of, I, I can hear it. I'm like listening for what's being thought. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then, I, and yeah. then you said, yes, yes, exactly, right? So there's that sense in which, there's that sense in which I, I listen for what, to, and then I speak it, right? And then, and then you respond in yeah. that sense. And there's something that like, what's the feet like then, then, then that goes back over here. What does that do? Right. So and I'm think, wondering about if that's kind of the normativity or the, the sense of honing into the sweet spot, like feeling into, Oh, and here's that thing about like, okay, that sense in which I've noticed this too, of where you're, you're, you're listening to somebody and then something happens and you, it, it, it breaks the flow and it, and it's agitated, right? right? Yeah. But I didn't know, like I didn't know that there was a flow I was tuned into until it broke, right? Right, 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 right. right so there's right. that sense of like, that sense of like, on some level, we both are finding out what we're tuning into, right? Yep, yep, And, yep. and that seems to be the, that sense of like, is that what you and Chris have been talking about, the geist, right? Yeah, the geist, the third factor. Yeah. I think, that, I think the geist, is the soul of a dialogos the yeah. way right uh, so what what you're getting is like so it, it reminds me of fisher's notion of wonder if wonder is you're on the horizon of intelligibility yeah. and what the logos is the logos is right yeah. it's the it's the it's it's the presence of the horizon of intelligibility it's the moreness of intelligibility yeah. shining yeah. through the suchness right. of what's being particularly spoken in a, in a non-repeatable fashion, right? If we try to make this in any way formulaic, we'll lose it, yeah. we'll lose it. It always has to be jazz, right? It yeah. always has to be jazz. Totally. And, and I was trying to, and, you know, and I was trying to think about, okay, well, again, what's that doing? Well, we are, we're not just talking about the logos, yeah. we're embodying it, we're instantiating it, and, but then we're also, right, we're also, it, it, it is also symbol on it's also affining us mm. you know to, to the way being is disclosing itself mm. uh, yes. right? but as i keep yes. saying you know the dialogos affines us to the ontologos yeah and, and and so for me that moment of the third factor yeah. like you said that where where i mean part of it is you know part of it is you know cognitive science part of it is mm. what's happening is you and i are figuring out Right, how to get into the zone of proximal development. Mm -hmm. You're putting enough challenge on me that I have to stay really yeah. engaged. Yeah. You give me like if I if I start to break out of authenticity, genuine, yeah. you start to give me error signal really rapidly, even by yeah. like you'll your brows will go down slightly or you'll yeah. Yeah. so you know, and it's tightly coupled, but you so we're yeah. doing all the flow stuff, but we're doing more than that, right? Because there's also this there is and, and this is this is what I'm trying to talk. We're we're trying to right. We're trying to, we're trying to give birth, right? It's a, it's a, it's a deeper conception of, conce of conception, right? We're trying to give birth, like right. that 
this flow itself isn't that's that's not the goal the flow is it's great but the yeah. flow is ultimately the affordance of a reorientation of faith coming into mm -hmm. right relationship with yeah. other people yeah. right relationship with ourselves right yeah. relationship with being that's yeah. what this is ultimately about right totally coming into right relationship yes like this co it's both a reveal yeah it's a revealing right and a coming to being revealed it's 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 yeah exactly what i like about that it's like almost it's almost like undogmatizable <laughs> right? exactly and that and so you know yes. corresponding to trying to reinvent your soul yes. trying to reinvent your faith in terms of this sense of yes. faithfulness and you know jordan and i have been talking a lot about this jordan hall yeah. and i like yes. think about how you're faithful to brianna it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you have a you don't have a set of dogmas you yeah. don't have, I now have you finished. I have right. my set of unchangeable beliefs about you. Right. right? That's not what it means. In fact, that's, that's the disaster. If yeah. you get it, it means I am, I have coupled the emergence of me to the emergence of you yeah. so that those will always be affording and constraining each other. And yeah. so that's faithfulness, right? Yeah. That, that's faithfulness. And so that's, and that's that I'm continuity of contact. Yes, that continuity yes. of contact. Yes. Right. The continuity of contact. And so thinking about right relationship yeah. as evolving, adaptive continuity of contact, yeah. not, as you said, as any closure or dogmatization. Right. 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 You know, I'm cut. I'm, I've been. I've been. I. By the way, I really have enjoyed the psychologist that you've had on a couple of times. I think right. it's also, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. That so last. Wait, that last yeah. one. Yeah, that last one where he laid out. He brought up the picture and laid out the yeah, the model. Yeah, yeah. The justification stuff. The yeah. justify. Yeah, that. So so. There's something about this thing about being a forum, right? Like the world be a being a forum in which I, I am on trial, <laughs> right? On some level for yeah. justification, right? So I, I want to just kind of like think about this, right? But, that, but that's so Socratic, right? right? That, 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 that what we're doing, that we, and this, this is what Christopher Moore argues so brilliantly in his, his book, and you see it also in Gonzalez's book, right? Yeah. yeah. That we, we, we only really know ourselves as persons when we enter the field of justification yeah right which yeah. is not the field of blame it's not the field of accusation this yeah. is how we mess these things up it's yeah. the field of justification and that you know greg on reeks and i are like, i'm going to have him on regularly like once a month mm -hmm. on voices with Ravaki. i really want you to talk to him right i think it'd be really amazing yeah but the, but but, the, but moore's idea right that yeah. i only it's I only, it's not introspection, it's not even reflection, it's not going over my autobiography. When, how I know myself as a person is only seeing how I enter into and yeah. commit myself within the arena of justification. Yes. So self-examination yes. and the examination of the ways of life to which I'm will, willing to commit myself yes. and how they are affine to the ways right. of speaking to which i'm willing to commit myself yes. that's the only way of knowing yourself as a person yeah yeah absolutely yeah absolutely yeah i mean i i've thought i've thought about this a bunch of times of like if you took an infant you right you put it on a desert li like an island and it just grew up like yeah. what would it <laughs> <laughs> would say it could speak right which it couldn't but like what when you asked it about yeah. itself what would it say it reminds me of wittgenstein's things even if lions could speak we wouldn't understand them yeah it would, it would be this would be this would be a, a biological human being, presumably linguistic in some fashion. Yeah. But I mean, I, I say this really carefully, and, and I don't want to fall into some sort of easy moral error or be subject yeah. to unreasonable moral judgment. But I don't. It wouldn't speak as a person. Yeah. It wouldn't speak as a person because yeah. it hasn't had to. It hasn't had to mm -hmm. take response. Listen yeah. to the word. It hasn't had to take responsibility for you know tending the logos yes yes so there's something about so there's something about right if we look at like the di dialogos and the conditions yeah. of dialogos right um 
like on one level, what we're talking about is like the, ve- it's like what you're, what you're saying is, is the very stuff of which our development develops through, right? Totally. It's like, it's yeah. on some level, it's like, this is, some of this stuff is just psych- this is like psych- de- developmental psychology in a lot, in a lot of ways. However, I think the thing that we're, for whatever reason, right? This kind of sense about what's possible in relating this way as a spiritual practice, right? Has not really, I've not seen it, right? I've not yeah. seen it in the set, in the way that we're talking about. It. I think that there was like, there's the, you know, the platonic dialogues, right? Yeah. But the, you know, most of that is just, I mean, most of that stuff has just been studied, you know, systematized and studied in, yeah. in academic settings. But the sense of, and I just, I wonder too, what you think about this blind spot where when um, Gonzalez starts to talk about, like, no, you got to, you, you can't just interpret the content yeah. of the dialogue. You got to like right. look at the it's, yeah. it, the process itself is 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 kind of in so many ways is 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 the place where you find out where the thing really is. It's the point of the dialogues. Yeah, like, that's yes. what Gonzalez argues. Albo Rappe argues. Yeah, Moore argues. Like this is. This is a, like, this is, we play, like, you and I are pay attention. I'm saying to the listeners, pay attention. There's this growing convergence about, you know, how much the drama is doing as much work as the arguments yeah. uh, within the platonic dialogue. All right. of that, very, very right. much. Right. In yeah. fact, so, in fact I, oftentimes I mean, the I, arguments are just bring you to this aporia where all of a sudden none of the answers, right, that, that classic, right, ironic... Right like Socratic thing is where everything just falls apart. And then, and then, then everyone's really like ecstatic <laughs> right at the end. And, yeah, and, and people, and Gonzalez points out that, but what you get is you get the people who are often the combative interlocutors with Socrates yes. saying, but I want my sons to come and spend time with you. Yes. Because again, a way of life, a right relationship yes. to the logos of intelligibility right has been disclosed to them. And they have an intuitive sense that being around somebody who can regularly bring this practice about yeah. is gonna be beneficial to their kids in right. a way in which, you know, the the, the over technicalization of the sophists and just the, the, the obviousness of common sense won't educate. Yeah. Because if you think about what you said a few minutes ago, yeah. you know, this stuff we're talking about here, this, this is the guts of personhood. Yeah. And spirituality and reverence yeah. are about, you know, accessing and activating and celebrating and accelerating personhood. I mean, yeah. that's, that, that's what it's about. Yes. Um, it, it's a, it, it got me thinking about also what you just said a minute ago. Sorry, there's, you're, you're yeah. setting up firecrackers in my mind, mm-hmm. right? But fireworks about the normativity. And I was thinking that when we want to turn this, because we're doing it all naturally. Mm-hmm. But I'm trying to think about, okay, but to teach, to, yeah. to model. Yeah. I, I thought, you know, I don't think it's happenstance no. that the dialogues are about virtues. Yeah. Because yeah. virtue is the place where the moreness and the suchness, right. where the intelligibility and the normativity yeah. are coming together. It, it's like, that's the top, because it's both, it, it's yes. by its very nature, it has to be shareable with others, yeah. but it has to be personally relevant to you within your, your ability as a person yeah. to commit yourself to, to the forum of justification. The, yes. right, the Logos brings together intelligibility and commitment. So the main topics of philosophy should be the virtues. It should be like, what is love? But I'm gonna expand the virtues. What is meaning? What is wonder? What is beauty? Like all of right. these, that's like, like, so it's not gonna be like pure philosophy where we're gonna talk yeah. about the nature of cause, Blah, blah 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 but it's going to be it's good there is it's not happenstance yeah. that the topics are the virtues right. and this is where your intuition about how lecto do, like if you do lecto divina in a group divina, yeah right will will kind of naturally kind of just give rise most likely to dialogos yeah. Yeah. right yeah yeah because, because i mean so if, if, if readers want to see this they can go to my channel um and the lesson i gave yesterday on how to practice Lectio Divina. It should not be practiced until, 
it's an advanced technique. You should go through, a, you should have at least an introductory course right. in meditation and contemplation before right. you practice Lexio. But uh, let's take that for granted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the point about Lexio as a, as a bridging practice mm -hmm. is because on one side it reaches into the propositions because you're reading. But, yeah. but you're, like part of the Lexio is you set yourself to listen, yeah. right? You, yeah. you recite it yeah. and you set yourself with an intention to resonate with it and to read for transformation, not to yeah. read for information. Yeah. So you recite and you resonate and then you, 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 you're open to what grabs your attention. Yeah. And then you internalize it and then you enact it yeah. imaginally, not in your imagination space introspectively, you like projectively right. on the world. And then what would it be like to live this way, right? What yeah. would it be like to actually commit yeah. myself to this sort of an existential yeah. ethics? Then what's disclosed about yeah. being if I were yeah. to live this way, and correspondingly, yeah. here's the normativity, yeah. what would be demanded from me in order right. to come into conformity right. with that realization? Yeah. And then the idea is, you know, with, so I'm teaching people how to do it individually, but on the Discord server, we're right. talking about, yeah, but we want to do this communally, and that that's so, so important, right? Yeah, yeah. And what, so what, what I see it happening is, one person would do the recitation, Mm -hmm. And then everybody has their own individual moments where they're doing, going through this process mm -hmm. of Lexio Divina. Yeah. But then they start to share all the different perspectival and participatory transformations yeah. that, are, that they're getting an inkling of, that they are getting a taste, connoisseur, yeah. of how yeah. to aspire. Yeah. And then I think that will naturally start to lead into, right, into yeah. Dialogos. Because, you know, the, the sacred prose, the sacred poetry and the sacred prose, and you should read both, by the way, one of each, because you want... Yeah. You want them to talk to each other so that they can talk to you, right? Right. Uh, but that, that, right, that's going to naturally, the, you're going to, you're going to, the, the Lexio is going to reach back because you do it after you've done a meditative or contemplative practice or a Prajna practice, yes. a non-duality practice. It's going to reach back to that. That's going to afford you resonating yeah. with the propositions, but moving into the perspectival right. and participatory. Right. And then that's going to, when you're doing it in group, it's going to naturally feed it's yeah. dialogos because right. what you're training is a really the, the virtue that is needed for aspiration right. and transformation, which is the virtue of reverence. Paul Woodruff's idea reverence. that reverence yeah. is a virtue. Reverence yeah. is a particular kind of relevance realization yeah. that properly puts you into right relationship to what awe and wonder disclose to you as yeah. possible. Yeah. In fact, I'm wondering about like so now I'm I'm just flashing back to like all the moments that were like that, <laughs> like this yes, yeah, body yeah. memory, but like things and yeah. so like some of the most immediate ones, right? Are it has me wonder is the is the thing that is becomes present and we in a certain sense see, right? When this when the suchness and the moreness, like yeah. are you know, we're foreground, they, once they become foreground, back and they do this yeah, yeah, switching yeah. at some point, totally, they bleed totally. into each other where it's just animating. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering is like, it's kind of like when I think about that sense of being deeply moved by somebody, right? Yes. Like, that sense of being in reverence, right? Yes. Like, dis like di I'm disclosed in their, in disclosing them, right? And that there's that sense of like, reverence where their um their suchness is just a lie i yes. think it's usually i'm wondering about on another level if that's like almost like we're in the direct um to the the the, the virtue that i'm actually seeing a virtue in you right that is um that in some way is is like the i don't know if there was an s like if there was an essential if it was a sound right yeah. Like yeah. is that is that the the sense of where the the virtue where the 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 suchness and the moreness meet is that's the point where the virtue the sound of the virtue goes. Ooh. I, I think that's exactly right, and yeah. you know, and so Murdoch talks about this in the sovereignty of the good, and that's where John Wright got the notion of sensibility transcendence from. Mm -hmm. uh, so when when mm -hmm. those two like. Uh, uh, the, the virtue, I think, is the vir I think is the virtue. I would say this. This is how she says it. I'm now seeing you in a virtuous manner. She says that the, the primary act of virtue 
of yeah. ethics is proper attention. Attending to things justly is the core of any, that, that's the core virtuous act for her, right? Because yeah. if, that, that's where, that's, yeah. that's, that's where, the, that's that nexus yeah. point you're pointing to. And I think attending to things justly is a, a part of what reverence means, right? And it, it, it's, it, I mean, again, this is the secular overlap with what worship used to mean. Worship didn't mm. used to mean being sort of a sycophantic toady to God. And I don't mean anything insulting to the people that I know who yeah. I think, are, you know, but but I'm talking about a caricature that has become prevalent in popular yeah. culture. Yeah. Monty Python has made fun of it, like yeah. in the meaning of life, yeah. right? You know, oh God, yeah. you're so really big, don't burn us. Yeah. You know, all that all that kind of crap, yeah. right? But what I think was, what, what, what was going on in, what I guess for lack of a better term, I don't like this adjective, but authentic worship, right? What was exactly that is the sense of, you know, there is a just attention mm. Mm. that carries with, that I should have to God, and that brings with it a sense of reverence that I, I enter into the virtue of maintaining the right relationship mm. with that which continually can be a fount of intelligibility for me through awe and wonder. Right. That's see, that's what I'm trying to unpack yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there's that, that sense in which the virtue in which I'm seeing, let's say, like, let's just say I see something about you in your life, right, in that moment. And something shines for, and just moves me. Right? Yes, yes. And yes. Plato talks about that. Remember in the symposium, he says, you move from, and we've talked about this, the beauty, yeah. right? Yeah. You move from the physical beauty, right, to the beauty of virtue, right? Right, and, yes. Right? And, and, and exactly that. So I, I think that's exactly right when, when, right. when, that, when that, that moment sort of crystallizes. Right. And there's that. And it's, fun, it's really interesting because at those moments, I notice that the, that it's so, there is a silence that's so much at ease in, 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 in partaking, right? I, well, but I, because I, I think that's where the theory of theory, like yeah. remember we talked about this, because yeah. what happens when you're talking about virtue, right? People are right. They're 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 what right. they're doing is they move from reflecting to participating in its exemplification. Yeah, yeah. You and I, what we you, you think about how you you and I are doing this. I know you're doing it. And I'm yeah. doing it. Yeah. Right. We, we're we're trying to notice in what we're doing mm -hmm. the very virtue that we're also talking about. And yeah. This is what I mean by thinking yeah. and by speaking. The speaking right is is yeah. sort of. But, you know, yeah. what you're doing is you're constantly moving between reflection right. and exemplification. That's, yeah. why I can't, that's why I can't think independently of speaking it. The yeah. speaking is where I engage in the mirroring of the exemplification. Right. Right. When, right. When, we, when, we, when we connect, it's like, ah. And so I can continually go back and forth between, right? And this is what you should be doing in good phenomenology, right? I mm -hmm. continually point back yeah. and forth between... Here's my conceptualization. Here's my articulation. Here's my yeah. attempt to speak the intelligibility, the logos. Right. But here is my connectedness. Here's my participant. Here's my right. participation in exemplification right. of the very thing. And right. virtues do that for us. Yes. Virtue, is, virtue is the topic that not only commits us to aspiration, it right. also constantly toggles us between speech, reflective speech, and speech that exemplifies and enacts. Right, totally. Oh, interesting. It's like, it's interesting because the virtues themselves, right, if it's, if it makes sense to call it themselves, right? Yeah. It seems like virtues are those things that like, it's a little bit, they, they're starting to occur to me a little bit like light. You know how light has, it, 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 it withdraws in its complete disclosure, right? <laughs> But, that, but that's it. That's the yeah. whole point about, you know, the virtues. And, and, and Plato makes very clear, and uh, Highland makes this really clear in yeah. the question of beauty, that things yeah. like beauty should be, your ability to relate to beauty properly should be considered a virtue as well, yes. right? But, 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 but think about, think about what, what, what constantly happens, as you pointed out in the dialogues. We can't get a definition of courage. Uh -huh. What we can get is an ongoing right relationship to uh -huh. it, not just in thought, in reflection, uh -huh. but because we're exemplifying it, it's also calling us to commitment. It's calling us to the space of justification. Right? Mm. It's calling, it's calling yeah. us to transformation. Yeah. You can't get a definition. 
but we can't rely on just our untutored intuitions about courage either. We have to enter into this process and all we get is an ongoing right relationship. Virtues are also the thing that steer us between definition and into and untutored intuition. Totally. It's almost like there's a sense of getting a sense of like tuning an instrument, like the pitch, right? It's a tone us. Yeah. Yes, and then you've got to say that, guy. You have to say that. You're you're Heidegger incarnate here, yeah. right? And the, and the, and the, <laughs> right. And, and the attunement, right? Yeah. But you know, for the longest time, you know, I for, when I first read that, I only got it sort of conceptually. Yeah. And then I sort of got it phenomenologically. But yeah. now, and I hope this is the right adjective. Yeah. I'm getting it spiritually. I'm getting what that attunement. Yeah. Means, how it's bound up with totally. you know, soulfulness and faithfulness. And, yeah. and virtue in the way we're talking about here. Right, totally. Well, it's interesting that like, when you think about attunement, it's, it's that thing where it's, like, it's interesting. Attunement is one of those things where it's like, you, it, it's, it's kind of a little bit like, you know, Aquinas talks about time, right? You know, if yeah. you don't ask me, I know exactly what time is, right? Augusta. But, Augusta. So the moment you ask me, I, I realize it's, I have no fuck, I have no idea. It's, I'm yeah, totally yeah. perplexed, right? There's a sense with attunement that it's kind of like that. Like, if you don't ask me what attunement is, oh, I know exactly what it is. Because it's, <laughs> it's, but there's something about when you go, what is attunement? But there is this quality of, like, I was thinking about this, like, with the, the, the sense of, right, I was thinking about, about tears and grief, right? And, ah, yeah. and, and, like, oftentimes what I see is, is that when someone's in grief, right, for example, it's like, and they're alone. It, there's a way in which it's not totally grief until they speak about it oh, and in per right. Well, I've got to tell you about something. Yeah, please. So, um, I, I, I want, I want to, I want to slow down because I want to treat this with proper reverence. Mm-hmm. But there was, I was doing a, 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 a med- one of the like the, the live classes. And somebody brought up, and I won't disclose their name because I don't want to trespass on privacy. But I do want to, I do want to express, yeah. you know, um, gratitude for their honesty and their courage. They they brought up that they were in grief, and they were asking, well, how can the practice help? And, and part of what I, I tried to articulate is how grief has to be shared, not because there's a solution. Grief is a permanent aporia, right? Oh. Like to use our language here, oh. but what we're after is the way in which grief deeply humanizes is us in the sense of puts us into that soulful faithfulness, yeah. right? Yes. Because yes. um, I was talking about, I, I, I related the story of, well, let, I'll quickly do it here because I think it, 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 it's helpful. Um, so a woman comes to the Buddha and her son has died. Mm-hmm. This is, this is I, I love this. Because mm. It was one of those things that like, moved me. Right? Yeah. And she says to the Buddha, you know, resurrect him because I, I, I love my son. I'm in such deep grief. And, she, and, and she, he says no, because he, 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 he always refused to do miracles, mm. right? And, and she keeps asking and, and she's persistent. So then he turns to her and he says, okay, I will do it. But first you have to do one thing. You have to go into the city and you have to go to a household and find a household where there's a mustard seed. And she, oh, great. Right, mm. That's easy. Said, Wait, one thing. It has to be that nobody in that household has tasted death or grief. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and so she goes in and she knocks on the door and do you have any mustard seed and just one? Oh yeah, sure. But, oh, but has anybody tasted death? Oh yes, of course. And then she mm. goes from house to house to house to house, and then she goes, oh, and mm. then she comes back to the Buddha and she says, thank you. Now I get it. Mm. Now I get it. Right. Mm. And then I said that what we what we need is we there's no answer. There's no proposition. Mm-hmm. What we need is we need to felt that we're that we need to felt seen. I yes. thought about you when I was yeah. saying it. We need to mm-hmm. felt we need to feel seen. We need to feel heard, and we need yeah. to be deeply in touch with, you know, that grief is one of. I I I, I don't want anybody to go through grief. I'm not some sort of masochist, mm-hmm. but there is nothing that humanizes us more than yeah. growing through grief. Yeah, and one of the wisest people yeah. I met in my life, perhaps the wisest I've met in yeah. person. He gave me this advice. He said, don't get involved with anybody, like he meant deeply, friendship mm-hmm. or romantically, mm-hmm. who hasn't experienced grief. Think about that like it's the opposite of the Buddha's story. Yeah. Because yeah. they will not have 
they will not have sunk roots into the depths of their humanity yeah. Yeah. that have not gone through grief. Totally. It's exactly that. It's, it's, it's what mm. we're ultimately, the only thing mm -hmm. is to be connected with people who can afford us the only way we can go through grief, which is to grow into yeah. somebody else in, yeah. living in another world. Because that's totally. where we have to go. Because right. when, somebody, when we lose or somebody dies, our world is destroyed. Yeah. We have to grow into another person in another world. That's the right. only way. Right. And that process, that, that puts us in touch yeah. with our humanity and our personhood. Absolutely. And, that does. and then it's kind of like when we go through that, there's a sense in which when we sit with another, because I was thinking about this, back to this thing about with attunement, right? Of that it's, and I think this is kind of also what we're, you know, in Dialogos is we, we, attune, we are tuned by and attuned into, right, these virtues, right? Yes. Right? Yes. There's a, there's a way in which when I'm, for example, when I'm sitting with somebody with grief, there, there's, so like, like there's a tuning to them. There's like kind of feeling what it would be like to be them and like sensing it and like tuning into it. But not in a way that's trying no, to explain. No, them. this is. But here's the here's the yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, here's the thing where I think that 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 the, the practice of what it like dialogos the machinery it exercises is that like I think real attunement though is like yeah I'm attuning into your grief right, but I'm also attuning into something that you may not be able to be have access in because your grief right, which is I can tune into qualities of being. I can be yeah. attuned with you and your grief. So I'm like, I, I can tune into you and I can tune into your future. I can, I can uh, tune into these. And that's yeah, like sitting with yeah. a wide person, right? Like yeah, when yeah, yeah. you get no, the sense. That, yeah, that's good. That, 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 that speaks, that puts into speech sort of an image I had of when people, they need to feel seen and heard but your presence, I was thinking about, like what can happen is people are cramped in their grief. Remember a long time you asked me what's different now and I said I'm not stuck? Yeah. Uh, remember that? Yeah, yeah. So what yeah. happens is you open up this space. You don't say anything to people. Yeah. There's nothing to say. There's yeah. nothing you can say that won't be right. useless. Right. Absolutely useless. Right. But what you do is, what you just articulated yeah. is you open up a space, you scaffold access, right? And so that there, they're not, they're not cramped in their grief. They yeah. still have to unfold it and unpack it. Right. There's no way, there's not, this is what that, that wise person said to me. He said, there's nothing you can do about grief except go through it. Yeah. Like, yeah right? But yes. what you can do is like when you're with somebody and they felt, they feel seen and heard. And then you can, you can like, again, if you try and do this in any kind of manipulative fashion, it's, it's, it, it turns into vice very, very quickly. Yeah. But oh, if totally. You do it, if you can do it virtuously, you can open up a space so the person, you're not alleviating their grief. What you're doing is preventing the grief from being cramped into a kind of stuckness. Yeah. Yes. 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 Absolutely. And there's a way that you, you think about it. So, you know, it's just kind of like, just imagine grieving, right, with Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> right there's a sense where he would not look away he would not diminish he wouldn't deny he in fact yeah. if anything he'll he'll uncomfortably reflect back to you how painful it is in yes. all of its dimensions maybe even more than you're feeling it but at the same time he's also probably revealing eternity to you at this at the, everything yeah. beyond it right uh, yep, yep. There's that sense of I really like this sense of attunement and attuning into things and what's happening in and also with speech and thought, right? Yes, like yes, hearing, yeah. right? All these things kind of working together. And this sense of, you know, there's always that sense of, of where, you know, when the Geist that we've been tuning into, right, at some point shows up as the thing is 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 the thing that was always already the case yes yes like there's that that quality of yep, at some yep. point the the always already becomes but think about what you're inside of yeah but this is the platonic insight about that that feature of the logos which I, you know one of the things i love about you is you always you always give voice to that you always call us back to this and you mm. always wonder about this mm. like coming to do do reverence about it but think about 
this was Plato's point, and this is part of the anamnesis idea, right? Is that virtues have to have that to them to some degree. If you have no, and this was part of Aristotle's worry about education and why you have to yeah. have the right parents. But if you have no, uh, if you have, if you do not have the power, if you do not have uh, the, the potency in act, yeah. right, the actual potentiality, the right. activated, the power, right. if you don't have some honesty, I can't teach you honesty, right? I right. can't. Because right. if you don't have that commitment, if you don't sense its normativity, yeah, right, like there's no way, there's no, but, but, yeah. right? Yeah, like, yeah. You, you may be, you think about the grief, you may be, right, I'm thinking of Socrates, and, mm. right, you may be cramped, you may be right. stuck, right? And I can afford you unfolding that. But oh. it, there's a sense in which it's anamnesis. It, like you always had to have some genuine virtue of honesty. That's why you can exemplify it yes. in the practice and then be called by it. Right. See, so the, right. the virtue is where we, where we can really yeah. pick up on. We can really, and I mean yeah. this word very strongly now, where we can personalize that feature that you keep putting your finger on, that yeah. we we discover, we yeah. come to discover something that yeah. is already some degree pre right. present and affording us. I come to discover what honesty is only because there was some honesty in you and I already yes. there affording yeah. the discussion of honesty. Right, right. Oh, interesting. So, so yeah, so interesting. I just wanna kind of hang with that for a second. You had that sense of that that sense of that always already, right? Yeah. It is when it reveals itself, right? There's a sense like this is where the, like things like faith and trust seem to yep. Yep. seem to be something just indigenous to it, yeah. right? I agree. There's something about there's something about like. There's yeah. something about like finding find like that. There's that experience of like, you know, you just think you're fucked, right? You just right. think it's the, like you're in some kind of catastrophic thing, and it's like you're just convinced it's all gonna fall apart. And then at some point, something happens, or you realize, or somebody says something, and all of a sudden you're like, whoop, and you're like, oh, it's it's fine. In fact, it was fine the whole time, right? And there's that sense in which like where it's been okay in this way that I didn't, I couldn't produce it like yeah. out of nothing. Yeah. There's yeah. something about that recognition of the background. It's already always already been in there. And it, I could like that. I could, it could be concealed from me and it still operate and organize the experience and be present without like in a certain sense, without me yes right even maybe in spite of me on some level right that there's there's some kind of sense of because there's that quality there's that quality of um like i'm thinking about when, when like the quality of 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 awareness or being or the felt sense of what wincott talks about the um the holding environment yeah 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 right yeah because on some level i think I think that there's a way in which we're always tuned into a certain way because we're always inside of something. We're always in the world. So there's always this, the way it seems or it is. And there's a qu quality of like holded this, right? And so there's something yeah. about, there's something about these kinds of dialogues, right? That are so encouraging, right? Yes. Right. Good word, by the way. Good totally. Word. It's like they're encouraging. And I think, the faith part is this kind of recognition of, oh God, there's just like, there's something, there's an intelligibility that's beyond me. It's operating through me and I can, it can be concealed from me and it still goes, right? And then when I find out, it, there's something about that just goes really deep in the nervous system. I, I, think, I think your point about how that engenders virtues, yeah. like courage, yeah. it encourages us. I think right. it entrusts us, right. it trusts us, um, and, and you know, it, you know, and it brings us into a, a, yeah. you know a kind of faithfulness. I think that's deeply right. Yeah. Notice again, come back to the you know the point that Gonzalez makes. 
Yeah. Notice how the way you could be mistaken about this, that which was that which I discover, but was which was always there. You could mistake that with the 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 untutored intuition of common sense. You could oh, it's just my intuition. It's not that. It's not that. Or you could mistake that with oh, well, there's a there's a there's a there's a definition that captures this, yeah. and I can then hold on to it by holding on to the definition. You can't hold, faith is yeah. not holding on to a, do, a dogma or a definition, yeah. nor is it just your untutored intuition. See how both of those right. are mistakes. We're trying to talk about something that's neither just intuition nor formalized possession, right? Because yeah. Yeah, as you said, you, you discover that it was always there, but it's also right. a real discovery. That's why I like this term inventio, yes. right? It's sort yes. of this, between right. discovery and invention, right? Right, right. right? And, and it's not your possession. Mm. You don't, right? So, but, right? Mm -hmm. so see what I'm trying to get? There's a virtue here of getting that, that, that sensitivity to that sweet spot mm. where you're sailing between the Scylla and Charybdis of, you know, mm. the obviousness of my intuition and common sense mm. or, you know, the self-evidence of this formal definition mm. that seems to capture everything completely and consistently. And you're mm. trying to find Right? Mm -hmm. No, it's, you're trying to find, and that's what you see the dialogues doing again and again and again. Yeah. Sail between those, sail between those, sail between right. those. Right. Totally. So, and, fi and, then, and then finding, in finding that you, like that sense, I know Jordan does this a lot, right? Where he'll oh, be yeah, like, yeah. he'll like, he'll recognize, oh, wait a minute, I realized when like this, maybe it got too fast or something like that, like when it went off, that I was tuning in, there was a flow that was happening that didn't reveal itself until it was gone, right? And then yeah, yeah, what yeah, is that? Yeah. That sense of finding all of our attention being oriented to something, right? I think so. And I think it's about, it's, I think it's, it's all of these things. It's a sense of an emerging mm. right relationship, the connectedness, that sense that we are being, we are being educated in the sense of a deuce brought forth uh, 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 yeah, that I'm cramping and unfolding of virtue, but but that virtue is always bound up with this necessarily yeah. with the way in which right uh, yes. the, the, the 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 speaking that is thinking right. of the logos is becoming beautiful to us and right. drawing us and saying look and you're going oh yes yeah. this is what this is what I could be oh yeah this is this is well that's that that there's the her, there's like the hermeneutic circle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That yeah. sense of that sense of of yeah. There's that sense of as I step forward, right. The what I was stepping on, like re goes yeah. into the background, but then yeah. comes in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. In that exactly. auto poetic. Yeah. yeah exactly. Spiral. Exactly. Right. That's, that's a fantastic connection. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And so so Hermes, the messenger god, language, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Totally between the two. Right. It's do, always moving between the two. Yeah. So good. This is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, is. This is so much fun. Thank you, John. Well, thank you, Guy. It's like, I mean, it's this. this mm. Sorry, I, I, I don't want this to sound self congratulatory, but I want to say I'm trying to express reverence and not be self congratulatory. Mm -hmm. But this is this is this kind of stuff yeah and then you know and then the work i'm doing with you and peter and jordan uh you know uh, you know and, and chris right and like mm. trying to uh, you know theorize about it but never to lose touch with the theoria or now the theurgia yeah. right and, and trying to get them all like that's the most important thing i'm doing that is yeah. the, the most important thing i'm doing yes it, right. it is it is what jordan said it would be he foresaw that that as yeah. this gets worked out it becomes you know the meta psychotechnology yes. that shepherds and curates and coordinates it be it feeds from but it also really feeds back into all of the other practices i practice and yes. teach and try to share with people it's becoming so important to me yeah it's like it's gathering i get this sense of yeah. and i've been Almost. watching this with you i've been watching this with you because yeah. when I first, when we first talked, I don't think the sense of dialogos was articulated yet. In fact, you were, I think yeah. you were, I watched one of your, one of your first videos with Chris when you were doing the series. 
Yeah. Like you were like, yeah, I'm trying to work this thing out. Like that there's something. Yeah. 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 Right. And you were talking about it in terms of like the role of religion. Right. And like, okay, yeah, yeah. traditionally religion has taken this, that's become less and less viable. So yeah. how is it that we get these things together? It's so interesting because it, you, you could tell you were like, yep. It yep. was present as the struggle of it's missing. Right. Oh yeah. Totally. Um, hang on one second. I just, my, my neighbor, I have to close my door. Hang on. <laughs> I got a little bit too Socratically inspired by my, for my neighbor's case. <laughs> but that sense of, um, you know, that's, uh, uh, th there was just that sense of, it, 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 you were aware and then it seems like dialogos right and in this thing just went oh like everything's just started to come together and i'm getting this sense of everything yeah. seems to be gathering itself like and there's the logos right totally the, the, the gathering of the logos in the face like really picking up on that in the face of the kairos yeah. that this is what is singing to me right now most pressingly but also beautifully yeah right? like, yeah like that's exactly and, and that moment where Jordan said that to me, right? And so I had these yeah. very good, I mean, good faith criticisms mm -hmm. by Jonathan Pajot and Paul Vanderclay, and they were like in, right? And, and then, mm -hmm. and then when Jordan said that, and then I had that moment of coming to something that responded to them, and mm -hmm. but I couldn't have done any of it on my own. It had to be like it was with yeah. and through him. Yeah. And then you know, and then I started. You know, I was already in dialogue with you. Yeah. I think yeah. Just starting. And yeah. I started to see this unfolding. That's when it all came together, and I realized, ah, this, this is, this is it. That, that was, the, that was, you know, that, that was, that, that was the touchstone, right? That started yeah. to reveal, uh, yeah. you know, when he main, said, uh, yeah, when he said the meta, the, the meta technology of, the meta, meta like, yeah, the tech, yeah. yeah, the meta technology, and then you were like, the next day, you're like, I think the thing that's circling yeah. may be the yeah. thing that did it, yeah. yeah. and then yeah. that's yeah. been. Yeah. Yeah, the conversation that going, going, yeah. and more and more people now are spontaneously. And this is this is how you can tell where I think you're really starting to get something. Uh, is more and more people are starting to see how these things could, uh, you know, how they could instantiate and exemplify yeah. and afford the religion that's not a religion. Yeah. So more and more people are saying, "I'm getting a sense like you just did about." Yeah. And again, I'm not the author yeah. of this. Yeah. I'm not a founder. That's a ridiculous idea. Yeah. But the, the, the sense, yeah. right? Uh, uh, right? Like, uh, yeah, I'm getting a sense of what this could be. Like, it's mm -hmm. now it's gone from being an abstract proposition or just some I image. It's gone to being no, no, no. This, this is, this is, like, this, this is actually nascent. There is something that is yeah. coming to birth right now. And, yeah. and and so that that for me is like okay. I, I stop and I pay very careful attention. The same thing I do with yeah. like teaching my students. When they start to, oh, right? When they start to get the gathering, like you say, right. and, and it starts to take on a life of its own, that's when it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I think you're exactly right. This, right. Is, this is what is so exciting about right now. And, and, and again, oh. the, the, how to do this virtually, how to be, how to be properly in relationship with this excitement and this creativity without losing touch with mm. the suffering and the distress mm. that are happening and how, how to keep them like in, 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 in proper proportion. Yeah. That's what ratio eventually, right. you know, rat, ratio was the, the Latin of logos, right? But yeah. it was trying to, the proper proportioning was that how they tried to get the sense of yeah, logo. totally. That, that to me is something, again, I'm trying to get like, how do we how, how do we do that and that kinship and that yep. friendship with the logos right? yes like i was thinking about like in a certain sense you know how like aristotle would talk about like that the that we think with the logos right yeah. like yeah. that 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 yeah. like it's we think with it right yeah. but then there's a certain point where it's like you think with it but then at some point like it kind of like the logos almost takes over right it's through you yeah and, and there's a there's a point where the logos thinks logos, right? Well, yeah, 
it, it, for me, and that's where the musical metaphors from Taoism are more yeah. really helpful. Because initially, yeah. you're listening to the music, and then you start to pick it up. But then what starts to happen is, instead of you just sort of listening to the music, it's almost like you start to become a, a, yet another instrument right. um, in, in the orchestra, right? You get yeah. orchestrated yeah. by the music, as, as, like just any other instrument. It goes back to your tuning metaphor. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that sense, too, of... You know, in the, kind of going back to the, like, towards the beginning of our conversation, just bringing in that whole thing about, just wondering about this, like, and I don't know if I understand his model completely, but that whole thing about the justification, what was, what did he call that when it comes out, that your, your friend, where it comes out of his, out of? Uh, so, he, I mean, he originally talked about it as the justification hypothesis, mm -hmm. but then he moved into sort of a justification system. It's Greg on Reeds. Uh, yeah. I really recommend people check out uh, that discussion with him. That was, I mean, he, he is really, I re like he, he's, he's, his ability to think really clearly, right, about, and just take all of these things, he, he's just really, I really, yeah. I, I want to, I want to speak with him. You, well, you should, you should. Yeah, yeah I, I want to, uh, I mean, um, he's going to be on the, I think he's been on the Discord server, my Discord server. Um, like I said, he, Greg and I are going to do, he, he, uh, um, he, he's been sort of following all of the stuff I'm doing on consciousness right now. Yeah. Um, and, and so he and I are going to have another um, mm. session and we're going to do it about sort of consciousness, the problem of consciousness. Uh, but mm. we're going to try and circle through his work and mine. Mm -hmm. He sees, he sees, he sees really deep connections uh, with, you know, the, the tree of knowledge the, that he's been working on the attempt to get a synoptic integration yeah. of psychology and, and, and the work I'm doing on relevance realization, yeah. the synoptic integration and cognitive science. Like, yeah. What's happening is that, well, it's reciprocal opening between his work and I. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, oh, he, he uh, I mean, there's been a, a, a later book by Sperber and Wilson. Mm -hmm. um, no, not Sperber and Wilson, my mistake. Sperber and Mercier called uh, The Enigma of Reason, where they basically argue for um, that reason is properly is, is properly a yeah. property and process within distributed cognition. It's dialogical, not monological in nature. Yeah. Big tome of a book. The thing of it is, uh, Greg, uh, uh, I mean, there's been a dispute between the, the, them, right? Uh, but it's clear to my mind after looking at both, Greg has absolute precedent. He published way before they did. His argument is, Almost everything that they have in their argument, he has in his, right? right? I think the way to think about it is, I don't think they stole from him. Or at least yeah. a, a, I, don't, I don't have any good reason for saying that. I think they should properly give him academic precedence. That's what you yeah. should do. Yeah. I'm sort of held off on that. I'm not happy with that. But yeah. what you've got is you've got two, and the similarities are so telling. Hmm. You've got this co powerful convergence of all of this work being integrated independently mm -hmm. and then converging on this idea. Mm. And Greg deserves real like credit for this. Yeah. And I'm not trying to take away from Sperber and Mercier, but Greg really deserves credit for this, you yeah. know, for that, you know, reason is ultimately dialogical in nature. Yeah. 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 Totally. In this sense of the sense of the justification Yes. Right, the forum of, of justification. No other animal justifies. We, yes. we are yes. persons precisely because yes. we justify. And here's yes. the thing. The justification is always bidirectional. We are always justifying to others and yes. justifying to ourselves, justifying yes. ourselves to others, but yes. we're also justifying others to us. Right. Who do we trust? Who is worthy yeah. of my trust, right? Totally. Now, here's the thing about that is that like, there's a way, no wonder, what I, thought, what I thought when I heard that, I was like, well, no wonder people get nervous when they make eye contact, yes. right? Like there's this, pheno I think that's what Levinas really pointed out, kind of phenomenologically. It was like, why is the human face always confront me as an enigma? But there's a sense in which that sense of obligation, yes. I wonder if the obligation is the obligation and responsibility of justification on some level of like, and what also he said, the thing about the reverse engineering of being able to speak, I thought was a great way of putting it, of like- Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he and I have been, you know, talking about that. And, and, and you know, that's the, I told him, you know, the design stance is the method 
the methodology of cognitive science and the yeah. reverse engineering. I mean, yeah. this is what you and I are trying to do here. We're trying to reverse engineer uh, yeah. dialectic, right? Yeah. The, from the historical sources and the current practices. Yeah. And, you know, and yet yeah, Greg was very much doing that. I mean, there's something weird, right? Because when 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 we, it's it, it's 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 the face, right? Because mm -hmm. animals have something. They have like if, if they're facing each other, there's 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 threat, mm -hmm. either a social threat of dominance or threat of predation, mm -hmm. right? Or, or or even just confrontation for sexual competition, right? So there's animal threat is there, but mm -hmm. then as you said, and Levinas points out, there's this existential ethical because we're persons in the space of reason and justification, there's this extra thing that comes on mm. top of it. And there's there, and, and then we, uh, mm. and, and, and what's really problematic is not only are both happening, we confuse them and like, and, and we equivocate and we get yeah. messed up about yeah. those two different things. Yeah. Right? Very, totally. very odd. You know, I've heard this, I've heard people reliably say, and apparently, and there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's surveys and polls to support this, that, the fear of speaking in front of others is greater than their fear of death. Yes, right, right, exactly. Because they could die. Their personhood could, is, is on trial. Yes, exactly, right? exactly. And so, right. there's, so this is what's really interesting is like a couple of things. To look at Dialogos in the context of that, right, of one, it seems like, so, so there's, there, there's really toxic versions of that, right? There's yeah, toxic yeah, yeah. versions of that thing going on, right? And that's that experience of shame and humiliation and having to prove yourself and you, and you have to hide it or yeah. you have to be, you, your justification is defensive, right? In some way, like it's like being in the courtroom. Um, but I'm just wondering about, it's interesting to think about is like, well, yeah, can we sense. move from the courtroom to the courtyard? That's sort of yes, the metaphor yeah. that's in my mind. Can what, we what, move from, yeah, move yeah. from the courtroom to the courtyard. Yes, exactly, exactly. So it, what's interesting is like, what is it when you make that move, right? If, the, the, if we, what is the L or like that you could say the elevation of that structure, right? What is it that's getting justified or, or maybe it's like the experience of justice, right? Yeah, but I think that's it. I think instead of the project uh, uh, of justifying ourselves, yeah. right? It, 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 think, um, I, I'm going to play with that word a little because serious yeah, yeah, is part of the logos, right? Yeah, totally. You know how when you justify a text where you're right or left yeah. justification, yeah. Yeah. you try to come into right relationship so yeah. that intelligibility is maximized? Yeah. So I think of it like this is a metaphor that the justification we're pursuing is not the inferential defense of our proposition. Yes, it's again yeah. the proper alignment for attunement. Right. It's coming into the right relationship. Totally. And if people are oriented for that, what happens is I go from the, the, the attack mode, because yeah. I've been thinking about this for the rebel wisdom thing on Saturday. I go from yeah. attack to amplification, right? right? If there's something, so the way I challenge you, think about in order for there to be flow, I have to challenge you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Is it just, oh, I agree yeah. with you. And we all love each other. And isn't yeah. this wonderful? And let's eat granola. It's not that crap, right? right? I have to challenge you because if I don't put a demand on you, first of all, you don't have to respond. And secondly, you won't get into the flow state. There is no right. flow state without demand. Yes. But if I attack you, right, then we're into the courtroom. But if I move to amplification where I say, well, you're talking about courage. And I hear you. First of all, I acknowledge. I make yeah. sure that I resonate with you. Yeah. I commit to the process not yeah. the proposition, yeah. and then after that, I say, but there's something about courage that I love. There's an aspect that I didn't hear in what you're saying. Yeah. And, and what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And I try to get you right. Right, to unpack. I heard you saying this. Is this right? right? Is there more here? You do this, guy. Yeah. And then yeah. what you'll do is you'll first um, help me unpack. Remember the uncramping? Uh -huh. What right. I'm thinking. And then you'll say, and, and we all do this to each other when we're poor, yeah. we'll do the amplification. We'll say, but there's a, we'll, 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 I'm putting words, but we usually enact it rather than yeah. saying it. Yeah, but yeah. It, it, yeah. It, in words, it's like, but here's another thing about courage that I love that I didn't quite hear in what you were saying. But, yeah. but, but you do it in a jazz way. You say, here's, here's what I heard. Yeah. And here's another, and can we, can we jazz our way from the one to the yeah. other? Can we, can we find right. the connecting flow? Right. And so we turn, this is what I mean about moving from, the courtroom into the courtyard. Yeah. We, we challenge, but the challenge is not the challenge of attack. Yeah. The challenge is the challenge of amplification. 
Yeah. I try, I acknowledge the suchness of what you said. I acknowledge yeah. in what you've said what I have not yet seen, yeah. but then I challenge you with the moreness of what you might not have yet seen. Right. And together, stereoscopically, yes. we come to see something more than we could see before, yeah. both of us together. That's and that the moreness movie. is both the yeah. ground and the aspiration. Yes, yes. Exactly. Yes. exactly. Right. Exactly. Totally. Oh, interesting. Yeah, interesting. And that starts to get into like where, whereas normally like in a courtroom, it's all about like, it's, it's like there's, yeah. there's something that you're trying to like win in the void and it's, it's establish it's, a position. Yeah, yeah, it's positional. Right, exactly. Right. But this is processual. Yeah. If the, one of the things I'm gonna ask people, like when you ask them to set an intention for Lexio, you can say set the intention for reverence, yeah. for transformation and a commitment to the process rather than to any position. Right. right. And, and not attack. What we do is we acknowledge, yeah. we amplify, and then we anticipate. Right. We're anticipating getting to somewhere we couldn't get to. These are the things that I, this is what I'm trying, this is what I'm going to bring into the presentation on Saturday. This is what mm -hmm. I want to then get feedback on and circle Beautiful. it back in when you and I, when the four of us yes. regularly keep trying to reverse engineer right. dialectic. Right. Absolutely. Beautiful. And I have a client, as a matter of fact. This is a great place to complete. <laughs> That's a great place to complete. So, yes. please remember to send me this Deep reverence, file. my friend. Yeah. Yeah, deep. Send me the file. I'm going to upload. You upload it first on your channel. Okay, I'll cool. upload it on Verses with Verveke. And then hopefully you'll get on the Discord server right away. Okay, great. What, 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 what should we call this one, you think? Um, I, it's, it's yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah. What, what was coming out here was... I think what was coming out here is virtue in dialogos. Both. In both senses, the virtue in dialogos and how virtue induces virtue, uh, how dialogos induces virtue from us. The yes. virtue within it and the virtue that is drawn forth from us. Bingo. All right. Ho. Oh. Take care, my friend. This okay. was wonderful. Thank this you. This is so awesome. Much. I've missed you. Yeah, me too. Yes. Me too. I miss you so much. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.